I think we can start. So <coughs> thank you for taking time. <coughs> so the name of my talk is GitHub Copilot versus Amazon Code Whisperer for Java developers. And as I just applied for the talk, there was kind of a bit different conditions. Now we have some some more stuff to talk. I will not bother you too much with ChatGPT, but uh, at least mm, for some comparison. And after GitHub Copilot, there is currently Copilot X in preview, and I got access to some features. So I would also say some words also about what is expected there. Uh, so my name is Vadim. I live here. I'm Ukrainian native, but I live here around the corner in Bonn. So this is kind of my home base conference. Um, uh, just visited in Dusseldorf several years ago. I have two passions, serverless and Java. This talk will be more about Java and one of the co-organizers of Java user group Bonn and also AWS community builder in serverless category. So having experience with cloud and, and Java. So you can drop me a message. I'm quite active on Twitter. Um, yeah, working for the company who produces software for designing and purchasing of the photo products, like photo book, calendars of the year, prints, posters. So simply everywhere that you can drop the, f the photo. Uh, we were founded in Bonn nearly 20 years ago, now belong to the Fujifilm um, Europe. So this will be kind of the agenda. We will quickly go through the introduction of at least Git GitHub Copilot and AWS Code Whisperer, and we will do some more or less basic comparison um, on, uh, uh, by different categories and then more or less uh, kind of conclusions and maybe predictions where we can go with that uh, in the future. But before I start, probably who of you is currently using GitHub Copilot at work? Okay, maybe several people. AWS Code Whisperer? Okay, this was more or less um, expected. Um, because this is more, more or less for the people using AWS, but uh, not exclusively. So let's go quickly. I just how to how we can just uh, more assign that that stuff. So all this all these tools, especially GitHub Copilot, AWS Code Whisperer, Tab9, and recently released Bart, are more or less code uh, auto completion tools. Yeah. So this is uh, for for software development, and um, they more or less all use pre-trained transformer-based language models. Some of them don't, don't even release what the models they use. G GitHub is doing that with kind of GPT series of, of, of things that they um, support. And I'm personally not machine learning and AI guy, but uh, just if you can would like to look into the architecture, more or less that's the same. You type some input and uh, more or less what should happen, there should be some meaningful output. Um, from this just uh, yeah just to fu to fulfill your purpose with the code yeah a lot of transformation going beyond and so on and uh, now looking to the history just not going through all of that but you see with all this gpt stuff we see more more and more parameters that that are used for training but nothing released since uh, gpt 3.5 so we can only predict there are pro probably billions of them uh, even three digit number of billions um, it started, uh, OpenAI started as an open source, so now it's more or less closed source. It's about making making money, money. Probably we can rename OpenAI and closed AI now that will more match what's currently happening. But you see with the each version, we can do m much more stuff, uh, much more code uh, can be produced. But uh, GPT models are also for natural language and all that stuff. So the current version of GitHub Copilot, not the X version, is based on Codex. And Codex is kind of some, um, yeah, that's based on GPT-3 more or less, which uh, uses this model to produce the code auto-completion. You can just simply um, do it for translation or more or less also kind of for completion of your sentences as well. So um, just you, yeah, recently released uh, GPT-4 and now Copilot X is using this API behind GPT-4. So it becomes, m yeah, really, really powerful. And you see just uh, how many, um, yeah, how much the output of this can be. And uh, this currently, uh, really, you can write poems probably as an output and uh, there is no end of this. So look, that, that can be expected that it will be much more powerful in the future. So if we look now specifically specifically at GitHub Copilot, 
then more or less what's happened happens yeah, it's based on open AI codex model you have this version you type the text then something will be sent to the cloud whatever that means in github context probably some github cloud and then there is some pre-trained models and then you will get back suggestions more or less uh, and then you can accept them reject them select through them <coughs> And uh, yeah, they say that you use OpenAI Codex model, AWS Code Whisperer is more or less the same stuff. Yeah, um, probably uh, GitHub says it's trained on GitHub public repositories. Hope that's the case, that don't train on private repositories, uh, but you cannot check. Um, and more or less AWS Code Whisperer does the same. They trained it on GitHub public repositories they don't have access hopefully to the private repositories and they trained it on the M AWS code base as well because AWS as a cloud provider or Amazon they have huge number of of code uh, produced in within the last 20 years in different programming languages so th they can really do the stuff what exactly algorithm they use is not known they say simply they just based on large language models LLMs but what exactly they use a kind of um, uh, yeah, they don't publish this. ChatGPT is a bit different. It's more natural language uh, processing. This is a chatbot architecture. Just you interact with the system. You can ask for improvement and all that stuff. It's not simply uh, I get code suggestion back and that's it. You can interact with that. <coughs> so now let's do some comparisons. So more or less, if you look in the programming languages supported, then you will see that yeah, we are in the Java conference and this talk is mainly about Java, but just to give you an overview, um, uh, GitHub supports much more languages in more or less stable state. Uh, AWS Code Whisperer says that they have these five um, languages that they primary support, but there is huge number of other languages that they more or less support, but the quality of trained data may be some kind of limited. Mm. And I only used it in the Java context. Uh, in terms of IDE support, you also see that uh, GitHub uh, does more, which is logically AWS Code Whisper a bit less, and both use their own uh, own um, IDEs. Like GitHub uses GitHub.com, cloud provider, and AWS uses Cloud9. Um, in terms of pricing, Copilot, uh, ten dollars per drink ten dollars per user mm. and per month and um, the business version costs you 19 and the, with the business version you will have they don't keep telemetry data that's the the importance so in case you uh, you use it within your company that's probably the right stuff simply doing this because then uh, you can even um, kind of encrypt the data and all that stuff. Uh, AWS Code Whisperer um, uses this, there is a for free plan for everybody uses that privately and for professional users it's, it's $19 per month but they stay if you use it for the open source project it will be for free as well. So this is kind of up to you. Uh, ChatGPT you have three plans and ChatGPT Plus, this ChatGPT 4 is just 20 months per dollar, uh, 20, 20 dollar uh, per month mm. and free plan you can be restricted on that so if you require too much output they can simply cut you because it's a free version. We don't currently know what uh, calc, uh, cloud uh, GitHub Copilot X will cost, it's currently in preview and it's based on GPT 4 um, so currently difficult to say. <coughs> So now let's compare it more or less, yeah, starting with very simple stuff. So let's start with GitHub and we would like to do something like class creation and we would like just to do it. So all this uh, ChatGPT uh, Copilot and uh, Code Whisperer, you can get suggestions on two different ways. The first of all, first one, you just start typing the code, for example, the method name and they d give you suggestions or you can write the comments. And then based on the comments, like, uh, please write me the code to produce the function that sums up to numbers, they can also produce the code. So this is more or less the logic in both cases. Here, just I would like, I named the class product and mm, uh, GitHub Copilot gives me the, su the suggestions what could be the meaningful property names and so on. You can give the comments what they may be. And this is kind of generated stuff. So more or less, 
good stuff so what uh, if we go to the code whisperer it will be more or less the same what i personally observed that the code whisperer is more like they they providing you ids in case you need them for example for the product class it's natural to have ids so they give you this out of the box but it's uh, very very easy to uh, to change and they also can give you meaningful equals and hash code methods uh, for your for your properties of course I, you can generate them with your id as well so and it's not necessarily what code completion tool can give you. ChatGPT more or less the same story. It just says yeah, generate product class in Java with hash code and equals method, and they suggest you this stuff. You can also say generate class with the properties ID, name, price, and then they will precisely give you the same. So this is what we probably call boilerplate code that um, more or less um, can be can be yeah time saver so now let's move to some some general tasks just to see how this uh, this may compare let's ask github to generate singleton i hope you can see uh, so in the first one yeah this is correct singleton and then in the second i, I just ask in the comment please do it thread safe yeah well, I, I don't remember how this um idiom may may look like with double check and all that stuff and they provide you both suggestions to synchronize the whole get instance method, but also double check idiom is there. So you can select uh, what, you, what you prefer um, in your case, probably the last one. Um, AWS code whisperer, the, the situation was, yeah, normal singleton was generated correctly, but then I'm asked to do this thread save. The only suggestion was to suggest me this synchronized method, which is not the optimized version. Only when I deleted synchronized keyword then the suggestion came to to this double check idiom otherwise i could not get it work and this is kind of down side because i need to know what to do yeah to force git uh, to force aws um, code whisper and, uh, to generate the stuff um yeah in this case uh, chat gpt provided all everything out of the box and with a suggestion to make it uh, here can you pro optimize the code so the thread save variant was also synchronized and then in the next step i simply said can you optimize the code they understood that it will be this double check idiom and then um, optimize the stuff so now let's go to some kind of simple functions and let's start with something i would like to calculate days between dates two dates yeah now and something in the future and so i wouldn't want to know how many days are in between so i simply started to type calculate days between days and then this suggestion comes and so this is github and just you see that uh, the, the 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 days were kind of integers which i personally didn't want so the next stuff was okay i simply imported by myself local date so i had suggestion also with the java one date which I also didn't want, but I didn't have any out of the box suggestion for what I, what was intended, like using this more or less new API from Java 8 uh, local date. If I import this, then GitHub Copilot understood what I wanted. Yeah, and then they provided me some valid implementations for this as complete auto um, auto completion. But this is not the best and optimized version. So in case I imported Chrono unit additionally, they understood that there is probably alternative I'm searching for and then they more or less provided me that version th with the corona unit days between two dates this is more or less what I wanted from the beginning of course very mixed impressions because I don't really know where how these methods uh, are named that I use I sometimes only know there is something with a corona unit that can produce the right result but nevertheless you can kind of needs to supervise this stuff to give some hints and then they just do the stuff so uh, simple the same it was with the code whisperer they suggested me more or less day for the same kind of task like a date between days and it was more or less the same then i imported local date then they simply suggested me uh, the valid implementation based on this and of course if i imported also chrono unit then they suggested me what i the, the most concise variant of what I did. Interestingly enough, when I asked ChatGPT, and it was even the older version, not even this four, generate ca calendar unit class with a function to calculate number of days between two days, they generated me directly what I wanted. 
Yeah, so the, exactly without any inputs, the complete code for this class with exact stuff. So I would say it's a bit amazing. Um, so now let's go, of course, this is kind of some basic stuff that you, that you use. So now let's go to more complex algorithms. And uh, what I did, and that I f first when I prepared this talk, I prepared with, with my older son who now learns programming. He's 16. And we did this talk first um, at Java Land um, in March. And yeah, he, he's li he likes to solve algorithms. And we just try, OK, let's, let's do some stuff with, the, with, with these tools. And we use this um, page uh, project Euler. There, there are simple al so simple algorithms that you can solve, and we started with some on the top. So now let's see GitHub, and we ask find the first ten even Fibonacci numbers. So please write me kind of function that calculates that. Not the simplest one. You should know what is Fibonacci number, then what is the even number, and um, more or less then extract first ten. And this is what uh, the code uh, suggested. So you see there's a big, uh, big, big function. So it's, of course, the number, if, if it's right or not, it's just uh, always interesting to see in whether it's the optimal uh, version that's also the stuff. But what I wanted to do is also to ask ChatGPT to generate me the test for this. And this is much more complex stuff because you should also generate the right, the test uh, correctly and just with the correct result matching the algorithms. So of course, I ask IDE to generate the test. It's bulk. But then I go into this method, find first 10 even Fibonacci numbers. Um, GitHub Copilot suggested me uh, the test. So this 10, first 10 Fibonacci numbers, like expected result. And um, maybe that's not perfect algorithm from the point of view of uh, efficiency, but at least th that's correct. Yeah, and the numbers that you see, generated by GitHub in the test, they are also correct. More or less the same with, uh, at least for this algorithm for Amazon Code Whisperer, the same story. Um, then they started to generate tests. They suggested two tests. So the first kind of, that the first number is zero. It's probably definition, matter of definition. If Fibonacci number can start with zero, you can find both. Yeah, For me, it starts it can start with one, but I use uh, I ask for even numbers. But uh, then th you see there are two suggestions. So the, the next one was more or less what I required in that case because I didn't want to have zero. But also the same situation, the GitHub Copilot, uh, uh, Amazon Code Whisperer was able to, to do this stuff. Oh. So GitHub, uh, so this is ChatGPT. They first suggested me as an ask to write the algorithm, the algorithm that will not work, uh, especially for this. Probably if you see this red stuff, you see that the numbers will be only added if, um, so they iterate over 10 numbers and only add if that's even. So in the end, you will not have 10 numbers in the array. So the algorithm is, is wrong um, and very easy to identify. I then ask to just optimize it, and then the second variant was correct one, but that, that happens with all the tools. Sometimes they generate you something that even cannot be correct because even the number of elements in the array is not. And with, with the test, it was then the same story. ChatGPT is also able to generate you the test. That's one of the examples. There are many others. So I took then another algorithm from the project Euler. And there was find function to find the largest polyndrome made from the product of two digit numbers. So you probably know what is polyndrome number. You read it from right to left and left to right. Uh, the same, like I would say one, zero, zero, one. But the, the task is to find the polyndrome, the largest pro polyndrome, which is kind of multiplier of two numbers. And then you see how this algorithm is generated. Let's forget the correctness. You see. Yeah, this is the stuff that is generated, and you see in the red is palindrome. So they use some function that they even don't generate. Yeah, it will be generated if you go below beyond uh, below this function. They then mm, GitHub Copilot recognized, ah, okay, I I would like to suggest you this function. Yeah, and then they suggest um, the, the palindrome numbers. But what's interesting here is that the algorithm itself is. Yeah, nearly correct, but what they suggest me is the mm, not two two-digit number polyndrome, but three-digit number polyndrome. 
So you need to supervise what's happening and then adjust it. Yeah. So in that case, I had to adjust it manually um, in that direction. Um, and the test was also correct, with which they generated. What was interesting that, and then I asked Code Whisperer to do the same. They provided me a bit di different algorithm. You see now from the biggest number to the lowest, but it was the same. It was also three digit number polyndrome. I don't know, maybe there are lots of public GitHub repositories where the three digit number polyndromes will be generated, but both misunderstood me. And so you I needed just a bit um, supervision on that uh, to, to, to adjust. Uh, interesting enough, the GitHub, the, the, the chat GPT was correct from the first one. So you just simply ask Java function to find the largest polyndrome you know, and then the implementation and the test were correct from this. So I tested lots of algorithms that's more or less the same story. Um, you need to supervise probably to check correct a bit, especially if you would ask um, all the tools to generate some, for example, write the code for um, sorting the arrays. This is not always, th the code may be right, but it's not the best and optimized version of the code. So that's up to seniors to look if that's correct, but it can produce you something quickly. Now let's move to the web development stuff with Spring um, to see what will be there. So I wanted to, to generate some uh, Spring Boot application where you save the products more or less um, in the database, like product entity. In, uh, this is, I generated the product class it remained empty. I didn't. I only added this text in the above, only text, and the whole rest was more or less introduced, gi given to me, generated. Yeah, it's really amazing. That's what I wanted for the product entity. It's just annotated with entity, as I would expect. And you see, even I have ID, and I have this annotation ID and generated value just to to make it persistent. Yeah. Then I wanted to generate repository. And yeah, that was enough to say uh, generate the repository and all that stuff belong was more or less um, uh, suggested me uh, by default. So this is kind of uh, also amazing, uh, simple comments. Sometimes you even don't need to write the comment. If you started with ent entity and then you generate product repository class, then GitHub was able to understand you need repository by the name conversion and because you started to work on the Spring, Spring Boot application, they understand the context. Sometimes it's simply uh, empty product repository will be enough for, for GitHub compiler to generate you the stuff. Um, more or less the same for the application class. Everything works even without uh, comments, so they totally understand what you want by the, by the name conv convention. And uh, more or less the same if I generate product controller, then the whole suggestion comes automatically. It's then up to you, of course, to map in the request mapping to what uh, URL it will answer and so on. But then they provide you more or less the scrub methods and what's really good, they understand the whole logic. So in this case, I used repository, but I did not use the service. Yeah, so it's up to you. You can write Spring Boot service and then use their repository to call. In this case, was shorter variant. And they understood that I should use product repository. And uh, in case I would gener also generate service previously, then they will adjust. So this is kind of the context is there. Um, yeah, I even asked to generate the test for the, uh, with um, mock MVC for this and more or less the code was correct. So only this, like, please generate me, please write me JUnit test for product controller using mock MVC. And the test was correct. So now let's move to code whisperer and then the things becomes different. Um, so if you simply say create Spring Boot product entity without nothing, so the empty class, then you will you will not get any suggestion, nothing, which is not what I would expect. The way I could make it work was by adding imports, like entity generated value and so, and only then the context was understood. But it's too much cognitive load for me to know where these imports are. And this is what, for example, GitHub Copilot did not require me. And this is this goes through all the layers. Yeah, even the product repository was the same stuff. In even they they knew that I will have product as an entity generated previously, but it was in the entity package and not in the model package. So you see, the import was then added, but it was the wrong stuff. 
easy to correct, but anyway, it's from the cognitive load that was required uh, on my side. It just, yeah, so I, I, I could not work with that. Uh, at least I couldn't make it work the same for product application without these two imports, it's not possible. And more or less the same and even worse, it was with the product controller. I had to add um, imports and after that, the service class was generated. So the usage as if I would have product service, but I don't have, I have only repository. So this is kind of where Amazon Code Whisper is really lacking behind. The, the whole context of what has been generated before is kind of unknown, especially in that case. And it's uh, um, kind of lots of stuff that I need um, to take care of myself. Now I go to the chat GPT and even use the fourth version here, which is this paid version, but I got uh, access to that uh, for some presentations. Yeah, what I really like with chat GPT, you can generate more than simple classes. Uh, or you can get the classes more or less suggested for you in one run. So I only say create Spring Boot web application to store and retrieve products. They give suggestion how se to set up the project. If you don't know, go to st uh, start Spring I.O. And, and do this and that. And then um, they start to suggest you all the code after another. So you don't need even to interact otherwise, or you would like to change something. So in this case, the product was more or less entity correct. They also, now this is the product repository, also correctly generated. Everything is more or less um, how it should be. Here I simply asked what yeah, the default generation was um, using, yeah, giving the product directly back. Um, I s asked to optimize and they give me kind of response entity back in case you would like to customize the, the response. So really fun interaction. Yeah, this is what they give me. Um, why should they use response entity in the product control? I simply asked and they explained me what, what can be achieved with this response entity comparing to the, um, uh, yeah, comparing to using the like, like entities directly. They also generate more or less GPA property. Yeah, so access to the database. Of course, you need to, to adjust this stuff. You can also ask to generate the POM XML if you don't go directly uh, via the, the Spring init. Um, they also generate, but you need to take uh, to know that that will be not the newest version of Spring because ChatGPT4 is trained with the data until September 21, so they don't have any knowledge of versions after that. Yeah, so this stuff. But anyway, that's something that that you can cha uh, change and um, yeah. And then here what. Yeah, can you check if nothing is missed to deploy the Spring Boot application? They found out that they did not generate demo application, so application class for me, and, and suggested that. And then I also asked, how can I deploy the stuff? And they provided me kind of some suggestions. Of course, common knowledge, but anyway, uh, what Spring Boot generation helps you. It's, it's, re it's really amazing, especially if you don't know all the details and just you want to ask questions. It's, uh, ChatGPT4 comparing to, to 3.5, it's a huge milestone uh, towards this, uh, that. So uh, AWS development, uh, I'm so doing lots with serverless, but I don't want to bother you with that. The situation is I thought, at least I thought that AWS Code Whisperer as an AWS tool can work better with um, serverless application because it's also AWS tech. I thought that will be kind of value proposition of AWS to ease the serverless development, the results were the same. Without I imports, it was not possible to generate even classes for this, or at least uh, for this simple architecture. The same situation with the Spring Boot GitHub was superior to this. So I was really disappointed, uh, the same result, um, and I think this was my feedback to AWS. So now coming to this ChatGPT ch chat function. So if you get access to Copilot X, overview and it's now in preview and they get give you access now if you are paying user for github and i'm currently paying for this presentation so they uh, sent me um, a kind of preview to, to at least chat feature what you will see it's more or less the stuff integrated that you can in, um, interact in your ide asking questions like in the ch chat gpt so this gpt4 power chat is more or less integrated uh, gpt uh, with some additional stuff that you can add the code into the where your cursor is. So you can ask questions, 
ask for generating the code, for example, the test, and then you can insert it automatically um, into your IDE, just not copying it like you are doing with, with uh, ChatGPT. But I know there are plugins to uh, using ChatGPT also in directly ChatGPT in your IDE. But it's really fun. As I tried it out, it also helps you, and, and uh, you don't need just to copy something uh, to the internet, public internet, which you're probably not allowed to do uh, because of the restrictions on, on the work. Um, in case you are allowed to use GitHub, then this is kind of the integration. This is in preview, and I'm, I could not test this. I'm in the, in the waiting list. They also provide you AI-generated PI requests just to ease the stuff, and they also check this <coughs> PI request and look for no not automating test that you supply. So there is a code, but there is no test, and they try to auto-generate automated test. I could not test it, but this is something that should come with the Copilot X in case, yeah, it, then they will go live, more or less. So now let's go mm, more or less to conclusions. This were only basic example, of course, we are doing with much more complex stuff. So generally with GitHub Copilot, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. Even if GitHub says for Java, it's kind of experimentally, they support better other languages, but the there was a low number of compilation and algorithmic errors. Most are easy to correct. Only small steps required to complete the task or correct the error. Of course, with the GitHub, you have access to open AI uh, technologies. It makes it very promising. And uh, they are bringing this ChatGPT4 capabilities with the uh, Copilot X, but remember that the training data can be old. And that's why that you need just to look into and do the stuff and correct that. So more or less, uh, I don't know if you know this Andre Karpate, and this is not an average developer. <laughs> he was the machine learning chef at Tesla. Um, and this was the tweet back even 22 in December that he is using GitHub Copilot mostly for everything at work, and it gives him 80% of what he needs. And probably he needs a lot. Now he came back to OpenAI. Probably it was advertisement for his comeback. You can also <laughs> uh, see this that way, but I think just this is uh, so it's it, it's not for fun. So this this can make you more productive. GitHub at least. Um, so AWS Code Whisperer kind of lagging behind currently. It's uh, as I first tested it, it was even in the <laughs> preview. And now it's GA since to general available since uh, two two months and it improved a lot. So I had a lot of completely wrong suggestions that I don't see. But anyway, UI UX is um, a bit tricky. As I told you, a lot of imports are required just to make make it work. And the generation code is only uh, suggested partially. I need to, to, to row by row accept it. And it's sometimes not very good UI UX. Co GitHub Copilot can be can suggest me blocks, independent blocks. Yeah, so I just don't need to interact it uh, on this low level. So yeah, there were some uh, algorithmic errors, also some compilation stuff. So that's uh, that's the thing. And this, um, for me, this uh, working with AWS services should become USP of, 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 of this tool, which is currently not the case. And even more, the people who are using a Amazon may know this code guru tool that looks into how correctly you, yeah, these tools ha can sp spot uh, bugs in your code, but the USP of this tool, they, they look how you use AWS services. If you're using them correctly, and it provides suggestions. So the situation is if I use AWS code whisper, it, it generates me sometimes the code that code guru find as not correct. And this is something I personally would like to see differently. So if AWS Code Whisperer suggests the tool, if I use AWS services, that I don't expect that Code Guru finds something. It should work together and it should be correct. Uh, one add-on is that a Code Whisperer can give you security scans for free, uh, mm, uh, a certain amount. If it's the for free version, you can use 50 per month per user, and for paying version, it will be more. So ChatGPT, it's a different story. It's sometimes it's, it's, it's really powerful. Yeah? And what I see interacting with that, it's, uh, it's, it's really amazing. Yeah? Sometimes there are wrong results, but the, uh, anyway, what, what I saw, it was m m really, from the correctness point of view, the best that, that I could find now. Yeah? Only this old 
train data is something uh, which you have to talk, uh, think about. What else ChatGPT or at least Copilot X um, GPT for base chat can give you? You sometimes it happens. You come, yeah, you you join the new company, and you have some old code and nobody understands it because the person who um, maintained this yeah, quit last day and now it's, it's your responsibility, you don't have any documentation and now good luck. So you can ask uh, uh, ChatGPT4 to explain your existing code and it tries to explain. You, it can also provide suggestions to improve it from the readability point of view, but uh, you can also ask for existing bugs even to correct if you see the test is broken, you can do this. You can ask to document the existing code. You can ask to generate automated tests. So this is kind of what you can will be, what's now possible to do. And this is kind of what is in this uh, slide is really, really beneficial. In many, many cases, uh, we have to deal with the code which is unknown to us. And then you can ask what's really doing in case there is no documentation, lack of tests, and uh, you need just to, to adjust something. So now to the conclusions part, generally a lot of room to improvement. Yeah, that's clear. We are in the beginning, probably one year ago, the, this kind of talk wasn't possible. There were no chat GPT and GitHub Copilot was in the first steps. More or less now you see Google released BART and all that stuff, it's starting. And um, yeah, but nevertheless, kind of profound expertise is required to supervise the tool. Corre correctness, efficiency, all this is required. Yeah, just uh, from your side, uh, probably the main target group is currently senior developers. They simply want to, to do the more in the same time, uh, say from this boilerplate code and all that stuff. Probably for the junior developers, it's best to pair with the senior developers because the code suggests that they may not be correct and uh, they can be too quick. Okay, it works, then next one. So that's, that's uh, something different. So GitHub Copilot and ChainGPT, they're both uh, powered by OpenAI APIs. So the improvements and synergies are expected, which is also happening with this Copilot X. And uh, quality of code whisperer should be improved drastically currently for Java. I did not test it for, for other stuff. So some final thoughts, how, where we may be going. So of course, code completion is not enough. Yeah. Uh, we need full, full cycle dependency management code configuration deployment in case you're using cloud infrastructure as a code should be generated. It's not programming language, but it belongs, infrastructure belongs to the code, testing all the observability stuff. So nevertheless, lot, lots cannot be done currently. And you see context and environment understanding, they are crucial and sometimes they are missed, like code whisperer misses that you are in the Spring Boot context and all the stuff. So there's lot, lots of room to improvement. But anyway, what you currently see that Microsoft will bring the conversational programming into the Azure cloud and conversational programming is probably the next step to this, uh, to using these tools. The cloud environments are complex. Anyway, you should glue the services together. You need a lot of knowledge. So all this stuff, so co we will see that Azure has already OpenAI service. I'm not the Azure user, but I know it's currently restricted, but we see that that, that Amazon is doing the stuff. They bring Copilot to every place where it's possible. MS Office Bing is powered by that, uh, Azure Cloud and all that stuff. So we see that Microsoft was more, more the first one and what they did, they put Amazon and Google um, on pressure on, and uh, did this as a cloud provider because conversational programming may become something probably in three to five years, but they are kind of pioneers. And of course, uh, Google search became also kind of on fire because Bing uses that stuff and integrates so Google needed to answer. And yeah, Google answered with BART, at least uh, in this uh, code auto completion tool. Amazon did, did it differently. They partnered with Hugging Face. This is alternative to OpenAI uh, for this to make AI more accessible for the users, but more accessible you will pay for Amazon services. AWS also announced this Bedrock service along with the um, Code Whisperer and what this Bedrock does is they, uh, they give you these um, foundational models that you can use to train the data. So these are these models for text generation, chatbot search, so pre-trained data that you can apply uh, for your use case. And they are partnering, Amazon is partnering with the AI um, labs simply to give you more of these um, um, models, foundational models to do the data. Uh, to, to 
yeah, to, to, to produce the results. So if you are interested in this conversational programming, I don't know if you know Simon Wardley with Wardley Maps. This was one of the person who, who told five, seven years ago that serverless will be the thing and people will do the serverless programming in, AW in clouds. More or less, he is now telling that kind of the next step of the evolution will be this conversational, conversational programming. Yeah, where you simply more or less interact on the intent base, what you would like to achieve, probably even the product base, and then this services will be, so the implementation of the sor cloud services glued together will be provided for you. So these are the links you can read about why he thinks and when he thinks it will come. So just, it's, it's not that will happen Sev uh, seven uh, se several days later, but probably the horizons uh, three to five to seven years. So this is everything I wanted to to tell you. And what questions do you have? Thanks for listening. Mm? I did not use it, but there are, um, like, ChatGPT for integrated uh, plugins, but you don't, you pay for op open AI calls. It's not $20 per month flat, but you are, you are there is API, open API um, behind it with its pricing. So you need to look at kind of per million letters that, that are backed as suggestions. So there is a different pricing. Behind this, you can do that, of course, uh, but you need to see how, how, how your costs don't run out of your control because the pricing of chat GPT, this is based per user months. It's easier to calculate as you're using the API and who knows how many, how many calls do you do, you do in your organization? Yeah, so there's some demand price. No, currently no. No, they don't tell it, no. I think it will depend how the others will answer. So you see also the, ch uh, after BART was released, ChatGPT added the connection to the internet that was not possible. So this is kind of the game is playing. One releases something, then another is in pressure. The cake is big. The cake is currently, <laughs> yeah, to be just taken apart. And yeah, the, 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 the speed of, of these things is just amazing. So, yeah, uh, the company where I work, it's the same. So it's of course, if you just type something job related in chat GPT, then you probably should ask yourself, are you allowed to do this? Because this data can be used for training and somebody can misuse it. Um, there will be, of course, solution for multi-tenancy. Yeah? And this uh, co-pilot with the business version for $19 per month per user, you can encrypt the data. And at least GitHub says they don't keep your telemetry data. So they only answer you and then they throw everything away. But this, you cannot check it. And it is only based on trust. So what they, they will keep or not, that's only trusting. But of course there will be, I would assume there will be multi-tenancy solutions for everything because privacy is an issue, of course. Okay, you ask, uh, okay, I understand your question. Mm. Mm. 
probably I'm the wrong person to answer this, but these are, these are concerns currently. Yeah? So, of course, it depends on the context that you are using. Yeah? If you just ask ChatGPT to generate some idea and you want to make money, that's a different case. We are more or less taking, talking here in that context about how to write the code quickly. Yeah? And uh, I hope that all the suggestions are all more or less in the legal room. Yeah? I don't know if there are patents for some algorithms but it also may be the case, yeah? And then this um, auto-suggestion tool should point you out, probably uh, are you allowed to use it or not? Currently it's not, <laughs> not happening, yeah? uh, Otherwise that can happen the same as, as, as Google had that as the Android developers co copied some code from Oracle, uh, Java, and then, <laughs> yeah, it was just several lines of code, but we know what to what it led, yeah? So this can also happen unintentionally that you copy from somewhere you don't know that it's just kind of protected. Um. Other questions? Only I think with GitHub business version should be. Yeah, yeah, that may happen, so you're probably not allowed to do this. A solution for that will be probably probably using open API in some multi-tenancy and doing it a different way. So currently I think ChatGPT doesn't, uh, interacting with the ChatGPT directly doesn't provide you any solution. Yeah, But the, if you're using APIs on which the uh, ChatGPT is based and there is a multi-tenancy solution, this is probably how we, we should do. So ChatGPT is more like a playground for... for mm -hmm. Probably I don't... Mm -hmm. Maybe they also do this, so why not? Yeah, yeah, so they will do it probably, yeah. So th I think if you will read the policy, they will do it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you are probably not allowed to do it. Yeah, you can play and play around with that, but I think this is the playground b that you use the APIs. Yeah. 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 Th <laughs> yeah. This is the. Yeah. This. Yeah. Other questions. Okay, then I will say thank you to probably the next speaker is here, or do you have one? I got the best result, of, but uh, with the Copilot X chat function, you will get the same, I will assume, yeah, that will be the same. There's the same API behind it. Mm. Okay, then now <laughs> thank you very much.